Good day everyone and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to be looking at biology and the topic is nutrition. So it's just like the continuing part of our nutrition video. This will be the part 3 of it. And then we are going to be looking at um, dentition. Now we'll consider dentition, then the types of teeth, consider the structure of teeth, the dental formula as well as dental care. But mind you, let's start by looking at the first on the list here, being dentition. When we talk about dentition, we are simply referring to the different number of teeth that are found in the mouth of organisms, as well as their arrangements, okay? So now, uh, we have quite a number of teeth that we have present in the uh, vertebrates, yes. Because now, looking at the world of animals, we have the invertebrates, and the vertebrates, the invertebrates, and we have the vertebrates. Now, from your understanding of the initials of biology, you ought to know that invertebrates are simply animals without backbones or vertebral column. The white vertebrates are simply animals with backbones or vertebral column. Okay, and then based on the evolutionary advancements of vertebrates. We have a code that can be used to membrane it. Param. P stands for Pisces, which are the fishes. A stands for amphibian, which are the uh, frogs, the toads, the newts, the salamanders, and the rest. And then we have the reptiles being the arrow, and then apes being the birds. And then we have mammals, of course. Man is an example of a mammal. So now, uh, looking at these organisms under the vertebrates, generally, vertebrates are simply known to be the ones that possess teeth, with the exemption of um, apes. So if you, are, if you come across a question and you're asked that which group of vertebrates are generally known without teeth, the answer is what apes, which are the birds, so they do not have teeth, okay? Then while the others, talking about the fishes, talking about the amphibians, the frogs, the toads, talking about the reptiles, we have the lizards, we have the snakes and the rest, and then the mammals, every one of them they have teeth okay then again invertebrates are generally known to be organisms without teeth but uh, there's actually a group of invertebrates that are called the mollusk talking about the um, the slugs talking about the um, snail and the rest of them now they are known to have uh, the presence of teeth uh, in a region in their body called the radula so it's like functioning as the teeth in that invertebrate, okay, the group of invertebrate there. So now coming back, we have seen that the tissue talks about the uh, total number of teeth in a given organism, the mouth of a given organism, as well as their arrangement. Now, to go further about the tissue, uh, we have two broad divisions of dentition. Two broad divisions of dentition. So you have to pay attention now. We have Homodont, we have homodont dentition, and then we have heterodont dentition. So homodont and heterodont dentition. Now, when we talk about homodont, we are referring to organisms that have the same shape, the same shape, size, and function of teeth. Okay, so my code is SSF, the same shape, size, and function of teeth present in their mouth. Okay, then while in the case of heterodonts, we have different shape, size, and function of teeth. And function of teeth. Okay, so that's it. So what distinguishes the homodont from the heterodont is that homodont means having the same shape, size, and function of teeth. The white heterodont means having different shapes, sizes, and functions of teeth. Okay, and from the looking at the world of the vertebrates, now the organisms that possess homodont dentition in vertebrates includes the fishes. We have the fishes, and then we also have the reptiles. We have the reptiles, and then we also have the amphibians. Yes, now these are. These are vertebrates that tend to possess homodont dentition. Then while the vertebrates that possess enterodonts, 
is man, which is an example of um, a mama, okay? And then other mamas as well. They possess intelligent dentition. But mind you, now, if you consider a man as a case study under the intelligent, you'll get to know that man is known to have two sets of teeth throughout its life um, time, okay? Talking about the first set and the second set of teeth. You must have been told that we have the milk teeth or the temporary teeth or the deciduous teeth and then we have the permanent teeth, okay? So then in man, since there are two different uh, sets of teeth, meaning a succession of teeth, then you can say that in man there is what is called diphyodont dentition there. Diphyodont dentition. And what does this one stand for? It's actually a, a kind of dentition in which organisms they possess two sets of teeth throughout their lifespan. And that you can see in man, okay, that's talking about the new teeth and the permanent teeth. Then we still have some other vertebrates that they only have just a single set of teeth throughout their lifespan. And of course, such organisms they exhibit monophyodont dentition. Monophyodont dentition. Monophyodont dentition. A classical example of organism that have this uh, just one set of teeth throughout its lifespan is rats. So an example is rats, okay? And then we also have some vertebrates in which throughout their lifespan they continuously shed off or discard their teeth and then they get replaced, okay, in the process. So such they are seen to exhibit polyphyodont, polyphyodont dentition. And such organisms, examples include we have the fishes, we have the fishes, we have the reptiles, and we have the amphibians. Okay, so these are the organisms that tend to exhibit polyphyodont in that they continuously shed off their their teeth or discard their teeth throughout their lifespan. Okay, so that's that about that. Then let's see the types of teeth, which is the next. The next is the types of teeth. Now, looking at the types of teeth, we have four main types of teeth. That's under the heterodont. Of course, you know, homodont talks about the same shape, size, and function of teeth. The why heterodont means different shapes, sizes, and functions of teeth. But mind you, uh, for that of homodont, there's something I would want to clarify. Now, homodont dentition, you know, that is actually found in uh, organisms such as the fishes, the reptiles, and the amphibians. But mind you, now, they might be having the same shape, and then they might be having the same function, but not necessarily the same size. So it could be that even those organisms that are actually uh, exhibiting homodont dentition, they could be having differences in their sizes of their teeth. But mind you, the shapes and the functions are intact, okay? They are still safe, okay? Just like in the case of crocodile, Crocodile is an example of a reptile. And of course, you know that in crocodile, you have the same shape, then differences in sizes, and the same function. Okay, so that's it. Then, for the enterodonts, looking at the types of teeth now, the, num the number two of this now, we have the first being the incisors, and then we have the, the canines, then we have the premolars, we have the premolars and then we have the molars. So these are the types, four types of teeth that we have. Now, considering the first one being the incisors. Now, for the incisors, they are known to be flat. They are flat and they are chisel shaped teeth. Okay? And then um, they are basically used for cutting and for holding. Of food materials, okay. Then for the canines, these ones they are known to be um, pointed. They are known to be pointed and sharp. They are known to be pointed and sharp, and of course they are basically used for tearing. Now uh, those organisms that feed on fellow heterotrophs, talking about the cannibals, they have well developed canines. In fact, from the name cannibals is due to their well developed canines. That was where that name came from. So they have these well-developed canines that they use 
for attacking of their prey, okay? And then they, are, they use it basically for tearing. That's the generalized function of the canines. Then for the premolars and the molars, these ones are known to be large and broad with enlarged, with enlarged cusps, which, with enlarged cusps. And now this cusp is actually the pointed uh, edges that you can see in premolars as well as in molars, okay? And basically both of them happen to be uh, teeth that are used for uh, chewing and for grinding. That's their basic function, both of them, okay? And again, uh, these molars, of course, it was derived from a la two Latin words called molaris, molaris dens. Now, molaris dens in Latin is loosely transcribed to mean milestone, milestone teeth, okay? So, that's another extra fact that you need to consider about the uh, molars, okay? So, that's that about the types of teeth. Now, looking at the structure, let's consider the structure, which is the next, the structure of teeth. Now, considering the structure of teeth, we have um, three main divisions or portions of the teeth. So, what are the three main portions of the teeth? We have the crown, then we have the neck, and then we have the root. Okay, so these are the three main portions of the teeth. Now, the crown is simply the part of the teeth that is above the gum. The region of the teeth that is above the gum is considered to be called the crown. So it has this kind of um, crown-like shape. Of course, the region that is visible to the eyes of the teeth is called the crown. And then it's whitish, meaning it is covered by a hard material, which is even considered to be the hardest in mammals. And the hard material is called enamel. Now, of course, enamel is considered to be the part that is actually found on the crown of the teeth. And it is considered to be the hardest substance, the hardest substance in mammals, in mammals, okay? And of course, it is uh, strengthened by calcium compounds, to be calcium phosphate or calcium carbonate, calcium salt compounds, okay? Then now, just beneath the enamel of the crown, you have the dentin. And the dentin sits beneath the enamel. So it is the enamel that protects the dentin. So get this thing straight. The dentin sits below the enamel while it is being protected by the enamel, okay? Then the next region is the neck. And of course, the neck, the neck region of the teeth is just like a junction between the crown and the root, okay? So then, proceeding to the root, the root of the teeth is, um, is simply made up of, we have a material, a very hard material that tends to cover the root of the teeth. The hard material is called cement, cement. And of course, it is the root of the teeth that is fastened to the jaws, talking about the upper jaw and the lower jaw. Of the mouth, okay. So now, listen. This cement surrounds the root and protects the root of the teeth. Then now, there is a membrane that is actually of fibrous tissues that tends to fit in the root of the teeth to the jaws, and that membrane is called the periodontal membrane. Periodontal membrane, okay. So take note of this: the membrane that attaches the root of the teeth. So the jaws is called periodontal membrane. And mind you, um, you should know that the upper jaw, the upper jaw is called the maxillae. The maxillae. Then this one is the upper jaw. Then while the lower jaw is called the mandible. So the mandible is called the lower jaw. All right. Now I said something about the crown that is made up of the enamel, and just beneath the enamel. Just beneath the enamel, I said we have the dentin. And just beneath the dentin, we have the um, pop cavity. The pop cavity contains pop cells. And these pop cells, they are rich.
in nerves, so they are richly supplied with nerves and blood vessels. And of course, since they are richly supplied with nerves and blood vessels, it means that these are actually what supplies the teeth uh, with nutrients and thereby keeping the teeth alive. So it means they do not they do not ensure the growth of the teeth. Please get this in straight. They only keep the teeth to be what living or alive. You understand? So it means that such case whereby you have teeth being alive but it's not growing is called closed teeth, and that you can find in man. So as we grow, our teeth does not grow alongside with us, like as we are just growing, as we are adults already, and then we are growing, our teeth is growing. No, it's not proportional, okay? So that's that for that, all right? So that's for the, um, the structure of the teeth. So now, let's move on to dental formula. Now, looking at the dental formula, it is actually a summary of the teeth that are present in one half of the jaw of an animal or an organism. Let me explain. Now we have the dental formula, the dental formula. Now basically, like I said, it is actually a formula that shows the summary of the teeth that are present in one half of the jaw of an animal or an organism. And mind you, uh, when we are talking about one half, we are also making references to the fact that we are calculating the whole of the teeth in the upper jaw. So it means upper jaw of one half over what the lower jaw of that same half. Okay? So now, for the dental formula, organisms that we are going to be considering are, we'll group them based on what they feed on. And if you can see, remember in our previous video, I told you that heterotrophs are divided into two broad divisions. We have based on what they feed on and based on how they feed. So based on what they feed on, I told you that we have the herbivores. So we have herbivores. Then we have um, carnivores. We have carnivores. Then we have omnivores omnivores okay so now an example of herbivore is we have a rabbit rabbit so looking at the dental formula of herbivore let's start with that of the dental formula of herbivore now we use that code of i c p n i c p n meaning incisors canines premolars and molars of the upper and the lower jaw of one half okay so looking at that of um, herbivore as rabbit now so this for rabbit then we have our incisor to be two over one then our canine to be zero over zero our premolars to be um, three over two and our molars to be three over three so when you sum up everything you know that it's just for one half so to get the total you have to multiply everything that you have here by two Okay, that's for the other half. So it becomes 2 plus 1 is 3, then 3 plus 3 is 6, then 8, then 8 plus 6 is what? 14. Then 14 times 2 gives what? 28 teeth. Okay, so that's for rabbit. Alright, but mind you, listen attentively. Now, do you know that um, there's the absence of canines in herbivores because it's of no use for them? So this absence of canines is known as diastema. Diastema, okay? But mind you, please, don't um, say that diastema is absence of just canines alone. Now, diastema is even found in man. So what is diastema? Diastema is simply space in the gum where there is no teeth. You understand the point? So that's what is known as what diastema. Like in some humans, we have some to have these gap teeth. Of course, you know that already, so you can call that the asthma. But mind you, there are still some other herbivores that have their own unique dental formula. Like in the case of cattle, sheep, and goats, we could have their dental formula to be I being 0 over 4, and then uh, we have C being 0 over 0. This is common to the, the herbivores now. And then we have uh, P to be 3 over 3, and m to be 3 over 3. When you sum up everything here, of course, this is 6, 6, 
that's 12, then plus 4, that's 16. So 16 times 2, which is the other half again, gives you 32. So this one is to the other herbivores, such as cattle, sheep, and goats, okay? So the next is cannibal. And the classical example here is dog, which is considered to be man's best friend, okay? All right, now looking at dog, now we are going to consider the, um, you can actually just pause the video and then take down this, uh, this dental formula, I'm about to rub up the, the board now, okay? So let's see, for the dental formula of, of dog, it's given to be I, C, P, M. And then the incisors is 3 over 3, canines is 1 over 1, then premolar is 4 over 4, then molars is 2 over 3. So when you sum up everything, of course this is 6, then 8, then this is also 8, that's 16, and this is what, um, 19, that's 21, 21. That's 21. So now this 21, now you remember I told you, you multiply by what? By 2. And then that gives you what? 42 as the total number of teeth. Okay? So 42 teeth. Then the delta for before I move on to the next, there's something very unique about dog. Now, in dogs, there is um we have a modified teeth coming from the premolar and the molar, and they are actually enlarged and then they are modified to perform similar functions just like the premolar and the molar. Now, that teeth is called the canisia teeth. Canisia teeth, especially those of you that are writing jam, those jam students, pay attention to this. Now, canisia teeth is present in dog and it is formed by the modification or enlargement of the last upper premolar and the first lower molar. So it is formed again by the modification or enlargement of the last upper premolar and the first lower molar. So there's a code for it. You can just use this last upper premolar and first lower molar. So my code is looking up flying mode. Looking up flying mode. So that's you can use to remember if that what forms the canisia it is last upper premolars and first lower molars, okay? So that's it. Then the next is that of man. Man. Now, for the dental formula, the dental formula of man, we have the I, C, P, M. Now, for the incisors is 2 over 2, canines is 1 over 1, then premolars is 2 over 2, then molars is 3 over 3, okay? So when you sum up everything, it gives you 16, and times 2 gives you 32 teeth. So in adult um, human, you have 32 teeth. But what about, you know, I told you that in man, we have two sets of teeth. We have the temporary, which is the milk, or the um, deciduous teeth, and then we have the permanent teeth. So in this case, this one is representing the permanent teeth. What about the temporary teeth? Now for the temporary teeth, the temporary or milk teeth in man, we have the dental formula to be represented as I, C, P, M. And then this I represents 2 over 2, then the canine is 1 over 1, then we don't have any premolars, but then we have molars. And when you sum up everything here, it gives you 10. And 10 times 2 is what? 20. So it means in the temporary teeth, it is made, it is having a total of 20 teeth. Then while that of um, the permanent has a total of what? 32 teeth. Okay? So that's that for that. Then, again, if you come across something and then they tell you about wisdom, I don't know if you must have seen wisdom teeth. Now, wisdom teeth is simply the last prim uh, molars, rather. It's simply the last molars. Now, you can recall that in the temporary teeth, we don't have 3 over 3 here, or rather 2 over 2. So when there is uh, the formation of the third molar, talking about the upper and the lower molars of the third, the third molars now, they are considered as wisdom teeth. And the reason why they are considered as wisdom teeth is that they usually um, start growing between the ages of 17 to 25 years. And of course, um, some persons, linguists, believe 
that um, because they are found coming out or formed between these ages, they are considered to be, um, you know, wisdom teaching that at that age, um, somebody attains wisdom, leaves the childhood, and then attains the adulthood being wiser. You understand? So that's just the concept there. So now we are done with the dental formula. Then the next is dental care. How do you care for your teeth? Of course, you know, you have to brush twice daily. Um, some persons preferably brush before they go to bed and when they wake up in the morning. And then again, when there are particles that are actually suspended in your teeth, you know, there is no all regions that your brush can reach when you are brushing your teeth. So you can use a uh, maybe toothpick to actually floss, we call it floss, to floss, meaning to pick the debris away from your teeth. And they also avoid eating sugary materials all the times because sometimes these sugar materials can actually, you know, get um, stuck with the teeth and can actually enhance the growth of bacteria and then producing acids that can as well damage the teeth. I mind you, it's very, very wrong for you to use sharp objects to pick your teeth. And um, those that are fond of, you know, opening, you know, corks or bottle with their teeth is still very, very wrong. And don't um, expose your teeth to, um, you know, opening sharp objects or um, br uh, breaking through uh, sharp materials, okay? And again, um, you must try as much as possible to visit a dentist at least twice in a year. Uh, just to um, confirm if your teeth are intact and all that, okay? Then in the case whereby you are experiencing difficulty, pains and all that, you can visit a dentist because a dentist is a professional in the field of medicine that, um, you know, majors on anything, issues related to the teeth. So now, we have come to the concluding part of this uh, lesson. So it's my hope that you've been able to understand everything that I've explained. So don't, don't forget to stay tuned to this channel and like, place your comment, share the videos and try as much as possible to always stay tuned so that you can get the very best from this channel. Thanks for watching and God bless you.